Hi, economic students. This is Dr. Seiwert checking in, and we're looking at chapter 10 this week, which is our real GDP and the price level in the long run. So we're getting into more depth, as you can see, more charts, that kind of thing. And a couple of things I did want to point out was on chapter, I mean, I'm sorry, on page 213, or I guess in your e-text, it would be figure 10-1, is an example of the long run aggregate supply curve. And so that, you know, it says it's a curve, but it really is just a line. And what that means is it's talking about the long run supply. So for example, last year, it was probably in a good place. This year, it's probably gonna be in a bad place, meaning it's gonna move, let's say, right or left, depending what year it is. So it's a, it's a um, vertical line that's gonna go back and forth depending on the year. And we see plenty of curved lines, like our production possibilities curve, but this one is actually determining the whole bulk of what a year the aggregate supply in the long run is going to be. So then um, it tells us what kind of things will change our aggregate supply and aggregate demand. Um, one of the things that was found interesting, an increase in the amount of money in circulation. <clears throat> Well, we've had that this year because there have been many stimulus um, checks going out. So that's kind of an interesting thing as you are reading your material about determinants of aggregate demand. You know, we have a real life example right there um, as, as we're studying this information. So it's I like to tie something maybe that's going on to what the information is in our text. So think about these things as you read through your material. There are lots of graphs and those are important too, but the material is something you're always gonna, um, that's always gonna stay with you, I believe, because that's the way it kind of worked with me. And so then the other thing I thought was um, interesting I wanted to point out to you is they, at the back of the chapter, they're talking about causes of inflation. Now, in our economy, we had a little bit of inflation going on before the pandemic, and that can be actually a good thing. Um, it's a stimulator, and um, you know we can have some debt, and that's okay. Now we're looking at possibilities of maybe recession because people aren't working, so we're spending all this stimulus money who's paying to replace the stimulus money, not as many as before. So we could run into some really bad problems as far as a recession coming up, you know, after this quarter or next, it just, we'll just have to see. Like I said, I hopefully I'll give, have some numbers maybe in the next few weeks about that. But, you know, most of the time we've been running on a little bit of inflation and um, that tends to be, you know, we are having a lower interest rate. Um, things are being bought and sold globally. And so that is a good thing for us, of course. So it gives us our supply side and demand side inflation uh, information. So like I said, in this pandemic, it's very applicable and probably more memorable as you read through it to go, oh yeah, that's what's happening right now. So. Anyway, I hope that you can relate what's going on to that and um, just want to touch base on your um, midterm next week. There will be a 30 point essay in it and I need you to give me an introduction of an economic subject that you're interested in or you've read about this, this last few weeks. Tell me why you've been interested and then conclude. So it would be basically a three paragraph um, essay. I don't want you to copy and paste from anything. I want it to be your words because when it comes through to me, it'll show if it was copied and pasted from an article or something and that'll be rejected and that's 30 points wasted. So I don't want that to happen. So the 30 point essay and then 70 uh, questions, multiple choice. The test is meant to be, you could start and stop it. I wouldn't suggest starting it on Sunday and then picking up again on Sunday, so I won't want you to run out of time, but it can be started and stopped and then you come back to it. And um, like I said, it's over the first 10 chapters and 
it should all be in your text. I don't have any problems on it. So it's more mainly definitions, things that I hope you'll take into your business world or your career as you, as you move forward. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, have a good week and good luck on your test. And I'll talk to you later.